Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about Intertropical Convergence Zone. This will be the fourth quarter topic and learning competency number 12. This lesson is under the Matatag Group. Objectives by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to first is to define the intertropical convergence zones. The second one is to develop and present a model or simulation that demonstrates the dynamics of the ITCZ and its influence on regional weather and climate. The third one is to appreciate the importance of the ITCZ in regulating global climate and its impact on on human societies and ecosystems by answering the reflection of learning. In activating the prior knowledge for the short review, instruct the learners to infer the amount of radiant energy received at different locations on the Earth's surface. And then ask the learners to decide whether they are agree or disagree with the given statements. Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ is a band of low pressure and thunderstorms that circles the Earth near the equator. This presentation delves into the ITCZ's characteristics, influencing factors, and its vital role in the global weather patterns. The ITCC is a low-pressure zone where the air converges from the northern and the southern hemisphere. This convergence causes air to rise, cool, and condense, leading to heavy rainfall. The ITCC is characterized by a band of thunderstorms that encircle the globe near the equator, low pressure creating condition for rising air, and high humidity and precipitation. The following are the influences on ITCZ's location. So the first one is the solar radiation. The ITCZ's location is primarily driven by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun. So the sun rays are most intense at the equator. The second one is the land-sea contrast. So land masses heat up and cool down faster than oceans. This creates different in air pressure influencing the ITCZ's position and the third one is the global wind patterns so the ITCZ is influenced by trade winds that blow from the northeast and southeast towards the equator the following are the global atmospheric circulation. So the first one is the equatorial law. So the ITCZ is part of the large-scale atmospheric circulation pattern and air rises at the equator and flows towards the poles. The second one is the Hadley cells. The ITCZ marks the convergence zone of the Hadley cells, large-scale convection cells that drive global wind patterns. 
And the third one is the tropical storms. The ITCG's unstable atmospheric conditions provide the environment for the formation of the tropical storms. The following are the seasonal shifts and variability. So the first one is the solar angle. So the sun's angle changes throughout the year. The second one is the equinoxes. So during the equinoxes, the ITCZ is situated near the equator. The third one is the solstices. So during the solstices, the ITCZ shifts north or south of the equator and the fourth one is the monsoon systems so seasonal shifts in the ITCZ influence the monsoon system in various parts of the world the following are the impact on precipitation patterns so the first one is the tropical rainfall so the ITCZ is a major source of precipitation for tropical regions providing essential water resources for ecosystems and agriculture. Another one is the dry zones. So the ITCZ's movement away from the region can lead to a dry season or droughts in tropical regions. And the last one is extreme events. Heavy rainfall associated with the ITCZ can cause flooding, especially in the coast areas and river basins. During the El Nino events, the ITCZ shifts eastward in the Pacific Ocean. And during the La Nina events, the ITCZ strengthens and shifts westward in the Pacific Ocean. So these shifts in the ITCZ's position influence weather patterns worldwide. The following are the importance for weather and climate. So the first one is predictability. So understanding the ITCZ's behavior is crucial for predicting weather and climate patterns. The second one is mitigation. So accurate ITCZ's forecast help us prepare for extreme weather events. And the third one is the resource management. So the ITCZ's influence rainfall patterns that are essential for water resources and agriculture. Monitoring and predicting the ITCZ's behavior presents significant challenges due to its complex interaction with other atmospheric and oceanic processes. Continued research and technological advancement are crucial for improving our understanding and forecasting capabilities. For the work example, instruct the learners to analyze the illustration and answer the questions about the